Okay, so our next speaker is, so, is someone uh, I myself have had the, the pleasure to work with on sustainable consumption in China. Uh, Marina Wu is the Director of Strategic Communications and Sustainability for North Asia at Unilever. And she's been involved in corporate affairs and communications uh, for nearly 20 years. Uh, and so, she, and she's here to, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that, but it means she's got a <laughs> lot to share. Um, and, uh, and she's here to, to speak about sustainability and CSR and how to turn that into a, a business competitive advantage. So please welcome Marina. This afternoon, I will be sharing with you some of our best practices for Unilever. The organizer of the meeting wants me to focus on two aspects. First of all, I will talk about our practice in sustainability. I will also give you a case study regarding how to further leverage your project in innovation in the big data era. Please allow me to introduce Unilever for now. Unilever is an FMCG company for FMCG. It means when you buy things, you don't think too much. You simply just buy them. And uh, when you purchase them, not for long, you will need to buy again. For Unilever, we are a company based in UK and uh, Netherlands. We have about 50 billion business in euro across the globe. Showing on the slide, these are some of our brand. You can find some of them in China, for example, Vaseline, Lipton, Dove, Soap. Some of the brands are not into China yet. For Unilever, in the globe, we have about 700 brands, and in China, we have 15. Let's look at some data. This is some of performance in 2013. 14 of our brand has a yearly revenue of 1 billion US dollar. In Unilever, we are different than some of the other competitors. 60% of our business is in emerging countries. Every year, we devote 1 billion euro for R&D. Every day, Unilever can get in contact with 2 billion consumers. Whenever I mention this specific data, people would be shocked. They say you are such a big company. But actually, when you are working for such an organization, it means high responsibility. Your product is either in the consumer's stomach or put on their skins, on their hair. So if your product are used every day by the consumers, that's such a big responsibility. You need to make sure when your product is in contact with 2 billion users, they are in the same quality, meet their consumers' expectations or even beyond. For Unilever, this is a huge demand. Whether CSR or sustainability in Unilever, customer needs and demand is always the priority. For the whole day, we talked a lot on the reasons to do CSR and sustainability. I want to share with you my understanding towards external environment requirement. For an MNC targeting FMCG, we have some unique challenges. Climate change is one big factor. When we talk about climate, it seems quite distinct, quite abstract, and quite hollow. What impact does it have on a company's operation? It lies on the following aspects. For climate change, it will change the water resources around the globe. The distribution of these resources is hard to predict. We are also witnessing more natural disasters. It will create disruption to your operation. If your company happen to having some blood flooding, then your numeration will be affected. If your consumer happen to be in the market of dry land, they don't even have water to drink, then how can they use the water to wash their hair? 
All of these are potential risks for a company like us. At the very right hand side corner, we have two photos. There are about one billion population in the world who are malnutritioned. We also have another one billion who are over nutrition or got obesity issues. So, in such a situation, as a world-leading food company, we have the responsibility, and we are capable of making our own contribution. Regarding these challenges, Unilever set up a vision. By double the size of our enterprise, we will also reduce our environmental footprint. We will also increase our positive social impact. This is posed by our CEO in 2010. I think Ralph specifically mentioned about Mr. Pullman. So thank you. Mr. Pullman just got a award from the United Nations, awarding him for promoting sustainability. I think with such a CEO, Unilever and all of our sub-branches are also dedicated to make our contributions to sustainability. From Unilever's point of view, when we talk about sustainability, in the past we think it is good for your reputation. But the way we look at sustainability, it's more about your business. If you don't have a strong business case, the sustainability will never be sustainable. The economy in the world is still recovering. When you cut budget, the first thing comes to your mind is charitable donation. If you don't connect your session with the business, your budget will be further cut. This is a scenario that is unstable. For Unilever, we would like to focus more on the business-driven factor. We are a consumer products company. No matter what we do, we need to service our customers and users. More and more customers care about not only your product's functionality. They started to look into the manufacturer, whether the manufacturer or vendors are responsible. More and more consumers started to raise more awareness. On the other hand, because I was born in the 1970s, we only get to know environmental protection after getting to university. But for our next generation, they started to hear about environmental protection when they are in the kindergarten. Now, from the junior age, they take the course like this already. Let's imagine when the new generation grow up, they are generation grow with this environmental concept. Their understanding towards environmental protection will be much significant than us. This conscious consumer population is increasing rapidly. For a company, we want to focus on our customers' needs. These three customers are quite conventional. They are traditional and have been there for a long time, but they represent a large portion of our business. Our products are distributed through Walmart, Gafo, or China Resource for this kind of shopping malls to get delivered to our users. For Walmart, they also have their own sustainability goals. To achieve their goals, they may have requirement on us as a supplier. They want Unilever, Procter Gamble, Nestle, or Danone. They would like to ask if you can deliver a product we want. If you have such a plan, if you have such a product, of course you will get more resources from your customers. These are all business opportunities for us. So in order to have more competitiveness over our competitors and gain more opportunities, 
sustainability and the CSR is one of our core strategy. For product and and D, when we describe the new product to our research personnel, we have a specific criteria talking about the sustainability issues. For example, we have the condensated washing liquid. When China started to use it, we have the condensated one already. But for many other countries, in the very beginning, they used the very normal version. For the concentrated one, during the production, it saved 50 percent of the water. That is very beneficial to the overall water reduction. For comfort, the softener, most people got refrigerator, uh, got washing machines already. But still, some people would like to wash their clothes by hand. If our product can do a better job in easily washed off, then that is more competitive than the other products on the market. About market expansion, that is every company wants to do. We want to get into new market. For this environmental friendly product, they are a good chance. For example, here we have an antibacterial soap. They are particularly strong in killing the gene modified bacteria. It was originally sold in India. This year we bring it into China. As well as in Indonesia, it is all very popular. We want to introduce this product to the family holds. We want to cultivate a habit among the young generations in the school. If they are educated in this way, you need to wash hands every day and maintain for 21 days. This habit will be maturized. And uh, all of this are done through our product. In the future, when the kids grow up, there is a greater chance that they will choose our product as well. For this particular soap product, it conveys a lot of social awareness. Since the birth of this product, a hundred years ago, it was used for diarrhea. But washing hands is the methodology that can avoid infectious diseases. For Ebola in Africa, in Western Africa, we still require the generation to wash their hands frequently. This is the important method and the cheap method to stop the bacteria. So for such kind of product, it's very beneficial to be extended into new market. On the right-hand side picture, we have the wash non washable uh, uh, shampoo. For the female users, we are not asking you to stop using water to wash your hair. But if you are in a journey or right after you do some sports, you feel sweaty. But if you need to take a shower, that might be some work to do. But for such a product, it saves water. It can also bring convenience. We can also receive more cost benefits. Sustainability seems costly. I have to say in the beginning, exactly. For this environmental protection program, if they don't cost a single penny, then I don't think that's real. But you need to evaluate the ROI. In the left side, we have the biomass boiler and the heater. This is in our Hefei plant. In the very beginning, of course, you need to purchase this equipment. You need to do studies. You need to find the right supplier to find the right vegetables to burn. But in two years' time, it will 
save a lot of cost in the long term, right? The natural gas price in China goes up, and it's not stable. Relying on natural gas or electricity alone, the cost will go up nonstop. But respectively speaking, biomass price is very stable, and you can control it. So this can help you us to cut costs. Right hand side, we have Lux promotional pack. Every year, we have several tens of thousands of this kind of promotional pack being sold. It was a plastic package, but now we started to use paper. For this packaging, it is different than the traditional plastic one. It may be only like one tenth of the RMB cheaper, but we got tens of thousands of these to be sold. It will save a lot of money adding them all. This project can save us about 2.5 million euro. What's more important is it saved about 7,000 tons of plastic. 7,000 tons of plastic is like several Boeing 737 material. Saving the plastics, cutting the carbon dioxide emissions, it can bring a lot of benefits to the environment. To work on the sustainable project, you do need to invest in the early stage, but not all of them are so big. However, the long-term benefits is usually beyond your expectation. It's also very good for your social awareness as a brand. Last but not least, we want to use this program to inspire and retain our talent. The competition among enterprises in a large degree lies on the talents. In the morning, John also mentioned, when we are in the campus recruitment, a lot of newly graduates will ask us what Unilever has been doing about the CSR. If I join Unilever, do you have any volunteering work? They ask us questions like this a lot. For those born after 1990s, they started to work as well. And for the future, those born after 2000, they will choose a company to work in which meets their understanding towards their life. For the senior managers, it is even a more important factor. In Unilever, in the recent two years, from the whole world to China, we have very senior managers changing their position to us. When you have accumulated enough experience at work, the salary may be quite similar from the competitors. So salary is not the priority they consider. Then what's the next? It will be the social responsibility of a company. A responsible company is indeed can be more appealing to the employees and talent. So for the sustainable plan in Unilever, we focus on its business value. We take this as a business plan. Since it's a business plan, we will need to have clear target and the measurable criteria. Unilever Living Plan has three goals. We want to help one billion people to improve their health and well-being. The second, we need to halve the environmental uh, impact of our products. Thirdly, we will have source 100 percent of organic material. Even by the three main targets, it seems quite big. How can I know whether you deliver that or not? For the three major goals, they are divided into more than 50 subcategories. Every year, we will do a quick review, and in a report, we will explain how we have been doing. You can find all of this on our official website, and you can also see which project is on track, which one is not. For example, it will say 
about uh, Purade. It will provide healthy water for 500 million people by 2015. And actually, we acquired a local brand, which is Qingyuan. It's also a market leader for drinking machines. And we acquired Qingyuan. During that time, the size was about the global size of Purit. So you can all see the capacity for us to provide healthy water have been doubled by acquiring Qingyuan. That can actually impact the product line of the company. And also, we expect female managers to reach 50%. Maybe that is a not a big issue. If you go to our offices, you can see we have achieved 50% of female managers. Because in China, especially Shanghai, we have a lot of outstanding female managers. But in some countries like Japan, India, and in some countries, maybe there were not so many women who are having their own careers. So their career development needs to meet the demands of the women, like there are some kindergarten, so that uh, the mother can participate, and you also need to provide some hotlines, and then you need to make some adjustment in your HR system. So all these 50 items cover R&D, production, transportation, usage by end users, and also waste, gas, and water treatment. In China, Every time when I talk about one billion people, they would ask whether you want to meet the demands of 1.3 billion. So normally we would say that we have three platforms, better future for children, better future for the planet, and better future for farmers. And for better future for the planet, it's about uh, energy saving and emission reduction. It means whether our products can reduce water usage, energy consumption, and waste gas emission. And during the manufacturing, whether the factory can consider about the energy friendliness. For example, our Tianjin plant, which is the newest one we put into use during our design. So we designed that according to lead and System, so we have received lead gold certificate, and some of our products, like we have uh, launched Dove um, water saving uh, Dove aerators. You can actually install it on the shower head. Actually, the pipe after the shower heads, most of them are the same. So this Dove aerators are installed on the pipes. Actually. While the consumers are taking a shower, they wouldn't feel the water is less or the water pressure is low. Actually, the water pressure in China is relatively high. But actually, the consumers don't know that if you use Dove aerators, it can save about 35% water. So we don't realize that we don't need so much water. But if you really ask them not to take shower for such a long time, they cannot change their habit. And many people enjoy taking showers. You need to find different ways so that they don't need to make, have a lot of sacrifices, but they can also save something. And then we'll be, they will be willing to do that. And a better future for the children it is because before we have worked together with Hope Campaign, and China pays a lot of attention to children education. A lot of our brands, like Life Boy, Omo, Haysline, have participated in this project. And globally, we work together with Save the Children Foundation for children up, up below. Five years, so we try to reduce the, the death rate. And in China, we work together with CDIF for 
rural areas campaign. Actually, some children in in the countryside didn't have the chance to go to the kindergarten. So CDIM countryside kindergarten campaign helps those children to receive some fundamental education. Or,、uh, habits building, so that when they go to the school, they will be able to adapt to the environment more quickly. And better future for the countryside is about sustainable purchase of agricultural materials. China is one of the major purchase countries for agricultural materials. Because we purchase a lot of mushroom and tomatoes from China, most of them for export. So, tomato are made into ketchup, and mushrooms are made into cans, canned mushroom. Most of them are for the ketchup. Actually, the tomato comes from China. So we work together with Kofco for over ten years. Unilever will send our technicians to Kofco to train their technicians, so that they can learn to reduce the usage of fertilizer and chemical insecticide, and improve the quality of tomatoes and mushrooms. Although Kofco is much bigger in size. Than Unilever, but they are very thankful to Unilever for providing support to their sustainable plantation of tomatoes. We have also helped a lot of tea farms. Six tea farms has received a certification of Rainforest Alliance, although they are not very famous in China. But they pay a lot of attention to the environment and social impact of tea farms, like whether you are protecting the local birds and forests, and whether the the tea pickers have received appropriate compensation. So, for Lipton brand,、uh, all our teas will be collected from. Rainforest Alliance certified tea farms. This is our bright future for the farms project. I have talked about the commercial values of Unilever. Actually, find raw materials, manufacture, transport, retail, consumer, and disposal. We have a complete chain environmental footprint. For example, consumers. Have that demands, so that brings a big challenge for our R and D and production. Of course, our sales department will be the major coordinating department. And speaking of the production cost, our finance and supply chain department would also get involved. And in terms of promoting innovation of new products, we need to work together with our suppliers. To do a lot of R and D, and also waste and treatment, and also for talents attraction. While we consider about the HR policies, we also need to base that on sustainability for our HR policies. Unilever's sustainability plan is actually a complete. Value chain environment footprint. This is what is unique for Unilever, but that is also a challenging part for us. When we analyzed every product about its environmental impact on, but actually, what is controllable by Unilever is only about five percent because you don't plant the, the raw materials such as tomatoes or mushrooms. Actually, a, a bigger part about that is consumer usage. For example, when we are、um, producing washing detergent, maybe we use、uh, only a small part of water. But when they are washing clothes with our detergent, they will use a lot of water. So most of the water usage will be 
from the consumer usage, and that is the most difficult part. We can think about ourselves. Like every day, when you need to wash your hands five times every time when you apply soap,、um, hand lotion, you need to turn off your the the tap, and every time when you apply shampoos. Or lotions, you need to turn off the the tap water. Do you think it's easy? I don't think so myself. Maybe we would feel that the hot water makes you comfortable. So, changing the behavior of consumer is not very easy. Of course, we don't have a magic lotion to change that. Otherwise, we don't need to sit here. Especially when we have a, a better and better life, we want to enjoy higher quality products and high quality life. But we do see that changing the consumer behaviors is very challenging. But that is the challenge we would like to face, because our products will embrace two billion consumers. We can feel that they like our products. So we have the confidence that we can try our best to change the consumer behaviors. In 2012, we have done some consumer survey in China. We found that actually the consumers, if you ask them whether you want to have a green and healthy life, they will be willing. If you ask them whether they would like to help、uh, the children in the Hope Primary School, they will be willing. But most of the consumers, they will not donate for a complete、uh, school because that will cost about millions of RMB, and a lot of people don't know how to donate, and they don't know how to convey their care for those poor children to the right people. They have a lot of concerns. Meanwhile, we also see in the digital era or the development of internet have brought us a lot of opportunities like WeChat,、uh, welfare, and also donation.、Uh, WeChat donation. We can see a lot of opportunities coming out of the internet era. So. We have also a digital platform which is called Small Actions Big Difference. So on micro Weibo, WeChat, and app, if you search for Small Actions Big Difference, you will be able to see our app. It encourages consumers to make some commitment and earn some credits, and these credits can be accumulated so that they can make some huge differences. So, to be more specific, the consumers will be able to register on our official website or Weibo or my WeChat. They can make some commitment and earn some credits, and we can turn it into some big actions. Maybe you might be confused by that, so I want to show you a video. After years of massive development in China, progress has had a negative effect on the environment and many citizens' lives. China is now realizing the effect of such growth. People want change but feel powerless to make a real impact. In a nation of 1.3 billion people, how can one Chinese citizen make a noticeable difference that will impact a greater good? That's where Unilever's Small Action Big Difference program for China comes in. As a company with sustainability at its heart. Unilever wants to take its consumers on a journey towards a future where sustainable living is an everyday experience. We will harness the collective power of Chinese consumers, where everyone can take small actions together with the corporate strength of Unilever to build a better tomorrow, where they can raise their families in a safe and clean environment. Connected to Unilever's corporate campaign, Project Sunlight. Small action, big difference drives sustainability action in China for China. It's built on the foundation of the work Unilever China has done over the past few years to create a better future for children, the planet, and for farmers. People can engage with us through touch points that they use every day—mobile, web, social networks, as well as point of purchase 
both online and offline. Joining is easy. Consumers are encouraged to record their small actions via the mobile device, participating in challenges and activities aligned with one of the three key pillars. They can participate on the official mobile app or join via Weibo or WeChat. Consumers can receive points, call Weili or Micropower for their participation. These can be converted into sustainable living actions, like planting a tree or helping underprivileged children. Consumers can also track their points, the campaign's progress, as well as their own impact via the campaign website. With small action, big difference. Bring your own chopsticks, as 25 million trees are cut down each year for one-off chopsticks in China. Clear your dinner plate, as 200 billion yen of food is thrown away in China each year. It is meaningful and it's also fun. Small actions are canvassed via interactive activities that both build frequency and encourage engagement. From useful daily tips to immersive social experiences, small action big difference is something for everyone. Through this program, consumers can witness how Unilever and its brands contribute to building a brighter future in China and in the world. Through this program, we will also be able to collect information from each engagement. An interaction that allows Unilever to better understand our consumers' needs and aspirations. These insights will enable us to improve our program further and to motivate participants to do more to help make the planet a better place. More importantly, it will give Unilever a competitive advantage to identify unmet needs and opportunities for game-changing innovation. Everybody will benefit from the Small Action Big Difference program. With Unilever working hand in hand with its consumers, we can change the future. Together, we can truly make China a better place for all of us and our next generation. So let's start now. Every movement begins with a small step. Join us on our mission to make sustainable growth a reality. Together, we can build a better, brighter future in China. I hope that this video can clarify about our small actions, big interests. So actually, our parts are not very expensive things, but sometimes it involves a lot of families. If every family makes some small actions, when we accumulate that, it will make big differences. Of course, for Unilever, we will not be able to achieve that on our own. So now we are working together with our e-commerce, like Tencent, and and also some NGO. I. Two weeks ago, I went to Jambe myself, to the grassland, and witnesses uh, actually by the the efforts of our consumers, we have accumulated donations to build playgrounds for ten hope schools. I want to tell you that. For donation,、uh, for building a playground for a, a school, it will cost about 100,000 RMB. If you want the consumers to donate, that is very difficult. Even if you have multiple consumers, it's still a huge investment. But with our small actions, big differences, we can see tens of Thousands of consumers who made the commitment. So ultimately, we have achieved our goals of building playgrounds for the hope schools, and the consumers can also feel their efforts are converted into some big differences. And in the future, because this platform of small actions, big differences was launched only this year. It will become an, an portal for a lot of our campaigns. For example, like Lust has their related campaigns, they will also have our digital platforms. Actually, we want more people to be engaged. We also hope that 
when they pay attention to small actions, big differences. They can also feel our actions for the society. Of course, this is also、uh, some new trial for us, and it was backed by a big data platform. So consumers of different brands of Unilever, because normally the the consumers will follow. Individual brands of Unilever,、uh, but this platform is cross-brand, so it can integrate information of consumers for multiple brands. There will be also some big data management. So we hope our future big data marketing can also do some contribution. Last thing I wanted to make is that Unilever take this as a case study for our commercial case studies. So. We not only to see that they are making contributions for schools, farmers. Actually, it also brings benefits to the business because this is a digital platform. We can work together with more e-commerce, Tmall, JD, Yihao Dian, because it will make our collaboration with e-commerce easier. But we also hope that we need to bring it to our offline platform so that it can be known by more people, and we can also increase the adhesiveness with our consumers so our platform can develop better. So that's the end of my introduction. Thank you very much. So we can have more time for Q and A. Thank you, Marina. Actually, my my previous work was in was in sustainable consumption in China, and、um, as Anna introduced me at the beginning, I've、um, recently joined the UNEP、uh, advisory committee for the Sustainable Lifestyles、uh, Program, which is going on for for ten years, launching next month. So this, what I what I'm、uh, what I've seen today,、uh, is is fantastic, and I'm really really excited, really excited to hear about it. Um, I'd love to love to talk more about it myself, because、um, consumers it is it is a really a big issue,、uh, engaging with with the consumers、uh, to change、um, to change behaviour towards sustainable lifestyles,、um, and it's it's a, an issue all over the world, but the middle classes in in China and across Asia it's a it's a, yeah a very big deal at the moment as they as they grow and prosperity is is still very unsustainable. Uh, very unsustainably focused, anyway. So this is, yeah, this is great.、Um, so I'll stop talking, and I'd like to open it up to、uh, to you guys for for questions. Lots of questions. Okay. Okay, go for the lady at the back. Ah,、uh, 谢谢 Marina. Thank you very much, Marina. I come from a new industry. I'm from finance. So thank you very much for sharing a lot of information. Very inspiring. I want to ask a question. In the current business environment, different stakeholders may compare yourself. They will deliver a benchmark, including your KPI, including your CSR program. So in your industry. You have some competitors. Their investment to CSR is also very big. Their CSR program also covers very diversified field. So, for my question, how can you deal with the pressure from the competitors, and how can you differentiate your own program to show your brand's advantages? Thank you very much for the question. In Unilever, we will also ask this question: How can you compete with your competitors? The answer is like this: We don't care what our competitor does. Just like selling product, we will not look at what Procter Gamble has been producing, what the other brand has been doing. We care what the customer likes. All of our attention are dedicated on our customer and our own stakeholders. If your attention is focused on your competitor, I don't think that is a good thing for yourself at all. I think Ralph 
in his sharing. He said it should be guided by the star instead of by the ship. I think it's similar to our strategy. This is how we define our relationship with our competitors. So that's the first point to answer your question. We care more about our stakeholders, our consumers, and our customers, what they expect Unilever to do, what they want our product to be like. Secondly, about the sustainable living and the sustainability. We are not that exclusive like our product. We hope the whole industry can join hands together to do something bigger. For example, Consumer Good Forum. We get gathered some of the major suppliers and the FMCG industry leaders for palm oil procurement. They need to rely on not only Walmart, Unilever, Kraft. It relies on the effort of all companies. Everyone has to make the commitment. We will buy the palm oil. Then the farmer in Indonesia and Malaysia will understand how important it is. If I don't build the sustainable palm, no one would buy my oil anymore. This requires a group efforts. In a lot of occasions, we are working with each other, not competing. Hi, Marina. Yesterday, we had the introduction about the circular economy from Peter. In Unilever, do you have a such a concept as well? For example, do you do life assessment to all of your products in Unilever? Yesterday, because I was not here for circular economy introduction, but we do have a life cycle assessment. Back to 2008, in 14 countries, 80 percent of our product has been assessed in the life cycle. In my slides earlier, we have a full management cycle from production, consumer, and user, etc. We are focusing on the exclusive business model now. In the model of Unilever's operation, we are not focusing on our own operation. We also look at the smallholder farmers, our suppliers, supplier, etc. All of the network in different tiers are also being considered. Whether it is their environmental footprint or their compliance, this is what we are focusing now. Marina, I think I was really happy to see your sharing. Unilever, for the past years of work, you naturally integrated CSR and your everyday business. I think this is a way to achieve sustainability already. For the program about small action but make a big difference, I'm really interested about it. So whether do you have any future plan for this program already? I think for this program, I need to go to Beijing and talk about it specifically with you. Just a brief introduction for now. Through a digitized platform, we would like to attract more users to use such a platform. Secondly, we also want to connect this platform with our e-commerce website so the sales volume can go up as well. To cut it short, these two are our targets. We are also working on the planning for next year, so later on we can have more discussion maybe. I don't say thank you for your support. Hi, Marina. Um, just very quickly, a comment and a question. Uh, I think Unilever is one of these perfect examples that shows how an, how an organization understands the sustainability context of their business. It's one of the very few organizations that in their target setting, which is a very important part in the sustainability agenda, link company targets to you know, the, the macroeconomic or sustainability urgency area targets. So that, you know, 
I think Unilever can only be commended for that. Um, the question is a little bit around the target setting um, and the scale of the target setting. Um, you were saying, you know, we want to um, um, reduce our environmental footprint by 50% by 2020 while doubling the revenues. Uh, you're saying um, you want to be 100% uh, sourcing until 2020 under sustainable um, conditions. Uh, you want to reach 1 billion people until 2020, always while doubling your, your, your revenue. So you really seem to be guided by a star. No? Better be guided by a star than by the light of the passing ships. How, can you share some more thoughts around how those targets were set so that you say, you know, in the end, reducing CO2 by 50% until 2020 needs to have a North Star where you say we want to be zero neutral by 2030 or something like that. Has that discussion taken place? How did, how did, did you set these very, um, uh, well, these great combined targets? Okay, thank you for the question. I think uh, I probably will uh, talk about the answer uh, one by one of the three big targets. Um, the first one about, I probably will start with uh, an easy one about the 100% sustainable agricultural sourcing. When we started this uh, Unilever Sustainable Living Plan, actually the percentage is only 14%. If we uh, take all the agricultural, uh, agricultural raw materials, only 14% of them are sustainably sourced. Today the progress is 48%. So I think year by year, we actually increased the percentage of the, our top 10 crops we sourced uh, across the business. So I think uh, if you don't do it, you will never achieve that. Uh, but I'm very happy that in terms of the sustainable sourcing, we are actually on um, pretty good trend uh, track about uh, the increasing percentage of the sustainably sourcing raw ma raw agricultural raw material. In terms of the uh, 1 billion people uh, to improve their health and well-being, it is kind of aggregate target of our four brand. They are Dove, um, Purit, Life Oil, and uh, the oral, oral brand. Because we have several oral brands like Zhonghua in China, Pepsodent in Europe. So it is kind of, so Dove is more about the self-esteem of teenager girls. Um, or young ladies. And Life Boy is more about hand washing habit uh, uh, for kids in the school. Purity is more about uh, safe drinking water. And Oral Brand is about uh, day and night uh, brush your teeth. So it is a kind of aggregate target altogether 10, uh, 1 billion uh, consumers. And today we reach about uh, 300 million people for these four brand, four categories. And we also started with probably 1.5, uh, 150 million people uh, around two year 2010. So I think uh, obviously this is not as quick as we expected in terms of this um, health and well-being target. But I think with the acquisition of the purification brand in China and also the rollout of Dove brand, we are also relatively confident about uh, achieve the 1 billion target in the future. For the environmental footprint, I think that one is a bit tricky because uh, it is talking about per consumer use of the whole life cycle assessment based on the matrix we have done in 2008. So it is quite a complicated uh, module to talk about a, a cup of Lipton tea, what's the environmental footprint in terms of the water, waste, and the greenhouse gas. And obviously, as I said, the most critical part is the consumer behavior change. We are currently trying different angles to tackle this uh, challenge, but uh, we don't know whether it will be achieved or not. Having said that, I think uh, uh, at least there are two things we are pretty confident. The first one is about our own, own operation. So from 2008 until 2013, most of our CO2 and water 
per ton production is actually almost uh, halved, uh, despite the production volume is increasing. And we are also doing a lot of things in terms of our warehousing logistic to reduce the water waste and the greenhouse gas. And uh, up to now, 75% of our, of our factory now achieve the non-hazard waste uh, disposal. So it's kind of zero uh, waste of non-hazard waste. So this is 75%. And our target is uh, in two years, we will achieve 100% um, zero non-hazard waste disposal. So I think in terms of our own operation, we can do a lot. And in terms of the consumer behavior change, we are currently trying different approach to achieve that. And I think we often, uh, I think even Popoman also uh, mentioned in some forum that we obviously were judged by our target but we are also judged by what we are doing, by our behavior. So if people or the stakeholder have seen Unilever's effort continuously in different ways to trying to promote sustainable living, even at the end of the day in 2020, we didn't meet the exact target about half. I think uh, uh, our stakeholder will see our effort, see our behavior, see our action, and will understand that. Great. I think that's uh, all we've got time for. <coughs> so thank you again to, to Marina. Um, yeah, thank you.